Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had your prima, smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and smash it right now. First and foremost, let me give you a shout out to the Patreon members. Andrew, Luis, Caligol, Charmandy, Robert, Johnny Lowe, Chevelle66, Renzo, Gigi, Abuelita's Journey, Dal Sorero, and Stelz Molina. If you want to jump on that Patreon, go ahead and sign up on the description below. This episode right here is gonna be about the Others. The Others car, right? Long overdue. Hector, what are you thinking? You forgot about us. You have not said one word about us. How dare you? Well, hey, there's like a million topics in the prison system, right? I don't trip. I'm getting to them, right? It's like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's what they say. So, did I have interaction? Did I speak to them? See them? Yeah, they were there. Okay, numbers. Numbers-wise in the California Department of Corrections. The others car, right? The others consisted of like Asians, Samoans, and anybody that didn't fall into the category of Mexican, white, or black. I already told you guys, California Department of Correction is definitely segregated by race by their own doings, right? The inmate population, because like, if it was up to us, right, hey, have at it. But they will absolutely refuse to live with certain individuals, which is their rules, their politics. Again, not ours. So as far as numbers, they are they are on the they are on the low they are on the bottom of the totem pole. Uh, numbers, right? The less population, the way they presented themselves or carried themselves, I should say, was very under the radar, which is great, fantastic, outstanding. Couldn't ask for more, right? I I personally didn't have any any incidents with others for like uh, maybe one or two can't really that's in 16 years like I can't I can't put a recollect anything like that that's not to say that they were not about the business right about the business so Hector you keep saying about the business man I heard you say that in multiple episodes what are you talking about what I'm talking about is like down for the cause, down for the violence, down to put in work, down to smash somebody, all of the above, right? Hold it down. One case in particular, right, at Sentinella State Prison around the year 2009, okay? That was a level 4 GP, Charlie Yard. Different beast, different monster, different time. But I guess level 4s are still level 4s, right? The Samoans. First and foremost, first and foremost, I never met a small Samoan. I never in my life have met a small Samoan. These guys are huge, massive, built like, uh, what's like, huge, right? So I always thought to myself, I hoped I never have to fight one of these guys. I, I wouldn't, I would get, it, 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 I would lose. I would lose, right? Like, I'm just being realistic. Like, it would be a tough battle, a tough fight. They were just huge, right? I didn't need 10 of them, let alone one, <laughs> one could smash me, right? So, here's the crazy thing. At Sentinella State Prison on Charlie Yard, you had the Volk Wall. The You had the five buildings, right? Charlie 1 through 5. And on the, by Charlie 5, you had the back wall where they do their vocational they would do uh they would sew boxers at the time so you got like machinery you got this you got that there's a culinary back there a chow hall so when they're behind the wall working or doing what they do they could eat there well we also have free staff in the prison system now mind you for this story right here i was not present Okay, I was not present, not even claiming to be present. I'm just letting you know what happened. There was a plumber, a free staff, right? And 
man, man, observation, right, that observation, that lady was very busy, that lady was very busy up there, let me tell you, right, it, very busy, she, and very good at her job, because she observed, she observed what was happening over the wall, she seen, I don't know how many it was, maybe two, two Samoans, already told you, one's enough, attacking a, a staff member, right, you're up there, you see, a hey, you got blue, attacking somebody not wearing blue, staff member, right, well, blue, un blue inmate attire, right, so for you guys out of state, what it ended up being was razors or, or tomahawks, slashing type weapons, they went to town, absolute to town on this dude's face, on the plumber's, on the free staff's face. I am talking about like, hey, this isn't, you know, one of those marks, one of those P marks, right, where you identify somebody that's no good. This was, this was over and over and over Carved up his face, carved up the plumber's face, right? And I'm a new CO. I had three years, two and a half years at the time of the uh, in the department. They said that when they responding staff came, right? I think she called a code two. Very, she was very diligent in what she did, right? You 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 see something like that, you you automatically maximize the uh, the response, right? Get the troops over, get the response to help. So she calls what she calls on the radio, everybody's coming. Like people that were there were telling me like, hey, it was bad, Hecker. It was bad. Like I could hear it in their voice trembling when they were telling me because like it happened, like the day that it happened, people were like calling me, telling me about it. And like I could hear it in their voice, right? They're like, hey, it was bad. Like, you know, males, females, it was it, trauma is trauma. And I've already told you guys this over and over and over again. Pretty much what they explained was this dude was crawling, the free staff was crawling on his hands and knees and his face was off, right? Like just, just filleted open, skin, blood, like it was bad, right? It was all bad. Man, for it was bad for multiple reasons because weapons were used, the message that was sent, um, the area of where they where they did the, you know, slicing, you know, you slice somebody's face up, you're, you're sending a message, you're, you want them to remember, clearly, but like I said, I, I wasn't there for that incident, but you know, I came like the following day or whatever, and there's tension, like it's just weird, you could feel it in the environment, like they're on lockdown, <laughs> back then when they had lockdowns, right, and yeah, we never, I never saw that dude again, I don't even, I never even saw those Samoans again, man. Like, that one was that one. A yard, man, this is a good story. And I always like to, I always used to like to tell my buddy, who's a sergeant to this day, about this story. A yard, there was a sergeant, go getter, go getter for sure. I've always liked the dude, solid dude. I've always liked him, kind of mentor. He's always been a hard charger, though. But not in a hard charger that he's going to get you in a jam by doing dumb stuff. Like hard charger, like he knows what he's doing. And if it so happens to go down, it's going to go down, right? I mean, technically we're peace officers. Alpha Yard, level 3 GP. You got Alpha 1 through 5. Me and my homie, another, another solid dude, man. It, uh, there was a lot of good people, right? There is a lot of good people. We hear the alarm go off in Alpha 1. We respond, right? It's just like you're just trained, autopilot. So we respond to Alpha 1. We run in there. We look up. And I run up the tier, right? I'm thinking it's like a cell fight. I, they didn't call anything. Either they call whatever they called, I didn't hear. But I don't, they didn't, they, the alarm just went off. And I see a big Samoan in a puddle of blood, right? Like long hair, face down, like snoring, snoring in the blood. 
and like I, I start I start getting like an M.A. Blue shirt right there, and I like start putting it under his head, right? And then like the medical staff comes. The the medical staff freaked out. She f it was weird. I never I never seen a medical staff freak out, and I'm like, well, you guys are medical, right? It's like she had some type of anxiety or panic attack. She's out of there. They had to go get somebody else, right? And. Like, we're gathering what's going on, right? We put this dude on the gurney. <laughs> put this dude on the gurney. And, uh, yeah, I look at my, the sergeant. This dude's all, like, me <laughs> he's, like, messed up, too. I don't know if there was pepper spray involved. There could have been pepper spray in the air. And, yeah, there was, like, a contraband cell phone, like, smashed on the floor. So, it turns out, it turns out, they went to go do like a cell search or or they caught information that this dude had a cell phone and when the door opened that inmate was extremely drunk imagine that a drunk samoan how dangerous that is a, a, a sober samoan is dangerous to me right let alone a drunk samoan comes out swinging they get in a Fight. Now you have two people fighting on the upper tier. That was always a fear of mine, getting tossed off the upper tier, right? Kind of had a lot of fears. That would be one of them. Another one would be getting my face sliced up because this is all I got going for me, right? <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, they're freaking up on the upper tier. All hell broke loose, man. Dude hits his alarm. We come up. I didn't even know that it was a staff assault. It was like, it was over fast. Uh... And I, I would always remind that sergeant <laughs> and be like, man, you're wild, man, you're wild. And uh, yeah, everything was on the up and up though, man. It was just a different time, different place. The inmates would fight you for their stuff. They, they, will, either, they will either fight you for a cell phone, for dope. <laughs> They'll take off running, right? And or... They'll like attempt to flush it real quick down their toilet. Those toilets have like superpower uh, flushing mechanisms. Yeah, you could probably flush a toilet inside of a toilet. That's how powerful they are. So it's just that you never know. You never know what you're going to expect. So it's better just expect the worst, right? Man, I started, I started this story by this episode by saying that the others flew under the radar and they were chill. I just told you about people just getting massacred left and right. With that, with, <laughs> with that, the message for today is, man, man, the, <laughs> the positive message for today is, does everybody get along, please? Keep pushing forward. <laughs>